Welcome friends, I am Luxinamark, and today I will be taking you through how to set up the Droid Button plugin on your mobile device. If you haven't installed the plugin, or aren't sure what a plugin is, you should first watch my video on how to install plugins on Vendetta Online, linked below this video. Let's begin by explaining what Droid Buttons is and why it's important. Here, you see what is effectively the default user interface. It is exactly the same no matter what mobile device you are using and cannot be modified outside of any of what the multi-functions on the bottom provide. This interface is... Eh, it's garbage. Any mobile pilot who wants to play Vendetta Online, even half-heartedly, is often going to want to change the interface, either to make it more comfortable, like me, or to add to it more functionality. Even pilots who use a physical controller might end up using some level of droid buttons to provide them with more input capability. This is where the Droid Buttons plugin comes in. Droid Buttons lets you add to or completely redesign the flight interface, all in one powerful tool. That being said, it is designed to appeal to a more power user than your average mobile pilot, and setting it up may be confusing at first. Hence why I've created this tutorial to walk you through the basic steps of setting up your new interface. When you first install Droid Buttons, it will create two buttons, DB and Reload, and it'll place them in the top left corner of your screen. Reload, or by typing Reload in the chat, slash Reload, excuse me, will tell the Vendetta Online client to restart certain parts of itself, namely the interface control and some related systems. This is useful if a plugin is misbehaving, if you try deleting multiple buttons at a time in Droid Buttons, for example, you'll likely come across this yourself. The DB button, or by typing slash DB in the chat, will open up the Droid Buttons configuration interface. You'll first see the screen for managing the Droid Button interface, but it is advised you first remove the default interface. To do that, go to the Droid Buttons Option tab on the top left, go to Advanced, and then select the Lock icon. This will enable modifying the settings here, and then select Remove Default Touch Interface. Go ahead and read the warning and then select OK to proceed. Just keep in mind that Droid Buttons is a plugin and not part of the base game, and so support with the plugin should be handled by the community. Do not ask members of Guild Software for help with bugs that might be caused by plugins on your system. We can see now that the default interface has been removed when we close it. Our interface is completely clean except for the two buttons that Droid Buttons itself created. So for now, now that it's been removed, go back to the Buttons tab of the Droid Button Editor and select the Add button down at the bottom to create a new control. First, let's create a field for strafing. Fields are the circular input areas used for sliding analog controls. They act like joystick, but uh, joysticks. So first select field as a region type on the top of the right modifier field. Go ahead and give it a title so you know what it is. For us, we're just gonna call it strafe. Though the title for fields doesn't matter very much. It's just so you can recognize it. Go ahead and uh, select the uh, X and Y axis, use the relevant control options for us strafing. So the X axis is strafe left and right, and the Y axis is strafe up and down. We'll skip the mouse look options and, for now, the invert options, but we will uh, select relative and nonlinear. We will but you might not. 
what these are, it, this changes how your input is handled and are down to user preference. If you find that um, the sensitivity of a field is kind of weird, try changing these two options to see if, you, if that was the problem. Otherwise, you might have to change the size of the field down here if you feel you don't have a granular enough input. Anyways, now that we've selected all these options, go ahead and select the Touch to Place button here. You can place the field wherever you like. We'll put it right here. Save up in the top left and hit save down at the bottom again. And now you can see that it has been added to your controls interface over here on the left. This saves and activates the new control. We'll do the same with another field for turning. Turning for the title. Oh, whoops, field. Axis, turn, Y axis, pitch. Again, relative and nonlinear for us. Touch the place, we'll, we can put that over here. Save, save, and there we go. Now we'll create a third field for handling our forward velocity. This should just be called a cell or whatever. And we'll do just the x-axis this time. You do not actually have to uh, set both fields to do anything in particular. And for this one, we'll make it pretty flat because we only want it to control that hit save there and then there save save you might be curious what I, why I've set up my controls like this instead of like how the default interfaces controls work since Vendetta Online is a very combat oriented game you should aim to make the controls as intuitive as possible and I find that controlling all strafing directions together is an easier concept for most pilots to grasp. Anyways, that's a concept for a different video, so let's just get back to setting up droid buttons. Our important fields are set up, so now let's cover how to add individual buttons. Instead of selecting the field when we create a new button, we're just going to leave it on the button option here. Here, title is important because that's what will appear on the button itself. So let's see, let's start with a simple button we tend to use a lot. We'll call it just debate. The command you use when you are jumping from one sector to another. Now the fields here are what controls what the button's action is. The short press, obviously is what happens when you just press on the button. The long press, uh, you do uh, change how long uh, you can hold it down for down here on the long press delay, defaults to one second. But basically if you press and hold on a button, it will then do this second action. And then long press cancel. If long press is enabled, then this is the command it uses when you let go. So since we're only using activate, we're just going to ignore the long press for now. Because it's faster, I'm just going to type in the command activate to the short press button. However, you will notice there is a down arrow next to each of these fields. If you press on that, there is a list of possible uh, commands you can use to add to this um, interface. That being said, you can always type in your own. And the reason you can type in your own is because all this is doing is these are the same as the commands you would put into the chat interface, uh, just without the slash. So we'll go ahead and save. Oh, I should probably uh, place it. Uh, I like activate being down here, down at the bottom. I'll hit save, save. And there, that's all you have to do to create a button itself. Again, I'll add another button. And this time, to drive home uh, that point, let's say 
what plugins do I have installed? Um, I actually don't know what plugins I have installed on this client. So, uh, but let's assume that we had the Honk plugin enabled. Uh, Droid Buttons is capable of interfacing with any plugin that uses a uh, chat command, like, say, the Honk plugin. So we'll just type in Honk here, and then for the button commands, obviously it wouldn't be under this uh, suggest suggested actions list, but we can always just type it in ourselves. Again, touch the to place. We'll just put it there, save and close. Now I don't, it's not erroring out, so I believe I might actually have it installed. Cool. All right, go back to DB. While you are creating this interface, I would like to note, let's see, let's call it fire. If you want to do your primary fire uh, button, which is usually the red fire button in the default interface, it is actually plus shoot two instead of plus shoot one. You'll notice here there are actually three. So plus shoot two is used for your primary or first trigger, and plus shoot one is used for your secondary trigger. Well, plus shoot three is your tertiary, which you don't get at all in the uh, default interface. So let's go ahead and just select plus shoot two. And touch the place, whatever. I don't even know if I have a weapon on this ship. I do. All right. Obviously, there are there is a minimum number of controls you'll need to have mapped out in order to have a functional interface, which I do have scrolling past here, but you should be able to get everything you need without too much issue. Of course, once you've built your interface, try to fight some hive bots and then another pilot and see if it's actually comfortable for you. The best droid button setup for you will take many tweaks over a long while but it will become an indispensable tool for you to use in the long run. Once you're all set up and like your new interface layout, take a screenshot and share it to the Vendetta Online Reddit. I always like seeing how everyone's personal layouts work, and it may help other new pilots who are still trying to decide what their setup will look like. Anyways, that about wraps up today's video. If you found this tutorial helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials, events, and general news coverage for Vendetta Online, you know to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.